You probably know Mexico as a country plagued by poverty, corruption, and drug-related violence. But what you might not know is that Mexico is now defying expectations and emerging as a rising economic power. Can you believe that Mexico's exports to the US surpassed China's for the first time in 20 years? Well, we will talk about that later in this video. But first, you must know this. Sharing the world's busiest border with the United States, Mexico's 1,954-mile northern frontier has become a critical gateway for international trade, with over $1.7 billion in goods crossing the border daily. Today, Mexico boasts impressive year-on-year -year economic growth, reversing decades of stagnation and instability. And with a GDP of over $1 trillion, it is the 13th largest economy worldwide and the second largest in Latin America. How did Mexico achieve this remarkable turnaround? The economic rise of Mexico has not been a given. For decades, the country has struggled with corruption, crime, and poverty, which have significantly hindered its progress. The persistent drug trade and cartel violence have exacerbated these issues, creating an environment often associated with instability and danger. However, despite these ongoing issues, Mexico has managed to make remarkable economic strides. The next question to ask is, how is Mexico managing to achieve economic strides despite the issues they still face? It all started in the early 20th century, when Mexico's fortunes changed dramatically with the discovery of vast oil fields, particularly in the Gulf of Mexico. The country soon became one of the world's leading oil producers, with its fields accounting for over 20% of global oil production by the 1920s. By the 1940s, Mexico's oil production had soared to over 100,000 barrels per day, making it the world's second largest oil producer after the United States. During this Mexican economic miracle in the 1940s to 1970s, the country's economy grew at an average annual rate of 6% making it one of the fastest growing economies in the world at the time. The oil windfall also enabled Mexico to become a major player in international trade, with oil exports accounting for over 70% of its total exports by the late 1970s. Despite its oil wealth, Mexico failed to diversify its economy and invest in other sectors, such as manufacturing, technology, and tourism. This lack of diversification made Mexico vulnerable to fluctuations in global oil prices, and left it ill-prepared for the oil price shocks of the 1980s. When oil prices plummeted, Mexico's economy was severely impacted, leading to a significant decline in government revenue, reduced investment, and widespread unemployment. Furthermore, corruption and mismanagement plagued the state-owned oil company, Pemex, leading to inefficiencies and misallocation of resources. The government also failed to invest in human capital, infrastructure, and research and development, which further hindered economic growth. As a result, Mexico's economic progress stalled and the country failed to maintain its growth momentum. Poverty rates remained high, income inequality widened, and crime rates soared higher. But things get better despite the challenges. In 1994, the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, was signed. NAFTA created a trilateral trade bloc with the United States and Canada, liberalizing trade and investment across the region. This led to a surge in foreign investment, particularly in the manufacturing sector, and transformed Mexico into a major export platform. It meant Mexico could now trade with the US and Canada with fewer restrictions and regulations. Between 1990 and 2020, Mexico's annual exports to the United States and Canada grew significantly. So much so that by 2020, Mexico's exports to the US alone amounted to over 330 million making Mexico one of the largest trading partners of the United States, only behind China and Canada. This surge in trade significantly impacted Mexico's GDP, helping it move from the 40th largest economy in the world to the 13th largest. But it even got better in 2020, when NAFTA was scrapped and the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement USMCA, came into force instead. USMCA has further modernized trade relations among the three countries, introducing new provisions on digital trade, intellectual property, and labor standards. The agreement has also boosted Mexico's competitiveness, attracting more foreign investment and cementing its position as a key player in global trade. The vast oil reserves and favorable trade agreements with the US and Canada have helped Mexico leverage nearshoring in ways that were previously not possible. 
Nearshoring is the practice of companies setting up operations in foreign countries, like Mexico, to take advantage of lower labor costs, skilled workforce, and proximity to their main markets. Many American, European, and Asian companies have taken advantage of Mexico's nearshoring opportunities, setting up manufacturing facilities in the country's northern regions. These regions have established a strong export base, leveraging their proximity to the U.S. market and Mexico's trade agreements to export goods, such as automobiles, aerospace components, and electronics. Currently, it might surprise you to know that last year, Mexico's exports to the U.S. surpassed China's for the first time in 20 years, with a total value of $475 billion. It even makes more sense considering the unstable U.S.-China relations currently going on. As Mexico's nearshoring opportunities continue to attract foreign investment, the country's economic growth and regional development have also seen a significant boost. I mean, look at how Mexico's northern and southern regions have distinct economic profiles. The north is more industrialized, while the south is more focused on agriculture and tourism. The northern regions have seen significant investment in the manufacturing sector, particularly in the automotive and aerospace industries. States such as Baja California, Chihuahua, and Nuevo León have leveraged their proximity to the U.S. market and Mexico's trade agreements to establish a robust export base. The southern regions, such as Oaxaca and Chiapas, have also experienced significant economic growth, driven by investments in infrastructure, tourism development, and agricultural modernization. In the first quarter of 2023, Mexico experienced a nationwide boom in formal job creation, with states like Oaxaca, Yucatan, and Tabasco registering 39,048 new formal jobs. In 2023, Mexico's economic growth keeps accelerating, with record foreign investment growth and a significant increase in GDP. The country attracted a record of over $36 billion in foreign direct investment, an 11% increase from the previous year, and its GDP grew by 3.2%. Mexico ranked among the fastest growing economies in the G20 in 2023, placing it ahead of several major economies, including Germany, France, and Italy. This economic growth does not mean that Mexico has overcome all its challenges. Despite progress, the country still struggles with significant issues, such as income inequality and poverty. Approximately 37.7% of the population lives below the poverty line in 2023, with a notable wealth gap between the rich and the poor. Many companies in Mexico are not registered, meaning they have no access to government funding or partnerships to grow, and they also evade taxes. The government misses out on significant revenue, which could be used to fund social programs and infrastructure development. In other words, even if Mexico is getting richer, it might not flow that easily into the nation. Mexico faces additional challenges. The poverty rate decreased from 52.2 million in 2016 to 46.8 million in 2022. However, this number increased to approximately 48.4 million in 2023. This means that 48.4 million people still lack access to basic necessities such as healthcare, education, and nutritious food. There is still much work to be done to ensure that all Mexicans have access to essential services and opportunities. Moreover, many workers still lack social protection, making them vulnerable to exploitation. But Mexico is on the right path when you look at its steady economic growth year after year, and that's great to see. And Mexico's economic journey is far from over. Unlike many European countries, Mexico has a young and growing population, a strategic location and abundant natural resources that bestows on it the immense potential to grow even further as a nation. Its demographic dividend offers a significant opportunity for economic growth, as a larger workforce and consumer base can drive domestic demand and investment. However, to achieve long-term economic growth and reduce inequality, it's crucial to effectively utilize investment and capital. This means investing in education, infrastructure, and social programs that promote inclusive growth and reduce poverty. Addressing corruption and crime remains essential for sustained growth. Mexico has implemented various anti-corruption measures, such as establishing the National Anti-Corruption System in 2016, and has intensified efforts to combat organized crime. Despite these efforts, Mexico ranked 126th out of 180 countries on the Corruption Perceptions Index in 2023. The government must strengthen these policies and ensure rigorous enforcement to create a more stable environment for investment and development. But on the good side, there has also been a noticeable trend of fewer Mexicans crossing the border to America. According to the Pew Research Center, 
net migration from Mexico to the United States has declined, with more Mexicans returning to Mexico than moving to the U.S. since 2010. Mexican immigrants made up 23% of the U.S. immigrant population in 2022, down from 29% in 2010. This reflects improved economic opportunities within Mexico and stricter immigration policies in the U.S. Mexico's economic story is one of resilience and growth. From its historical challenges to its current progress, the country has shown its ability to adapt and thrive, with a strong foundation in manufacturing, tourism, and trade. Mexico is poised for continued growth and development, and we're optimistic about that.